Here is another well-known result concerning the population variance. For the random variable x, and x could be discrete or x could be continuous, with population mean mu and population variance sigma squared. When they are stated in this fashion, it is assumed that the population mean mu and the population variance sigma squared both exist. The variance of ax plus b, where a and b are set in lower case, they are not random variables, they are constants. So the variance of ax plus b is equal to a squared times the variance of x. Kind of interesting, on the right hand side, b completely drops out, and you'll see why in the proof here. So for a random variable x, the variance of ax plus b is equal to the expected value of ax plus b minus the expected value of ax plus b squared. That is true by the definition of the variance. If you go back and look at the definition of the variance, you know that the variance of a random variable, and by the way, ax plus b is a random variable, is the expected value of that random variable minus the expected value of the random variable squared. So again, the variance of a random variable is the expected value of the random variable minus the expected value of the random variable squared. The next step actually uses two things. First of all, the expected value operator is linear. And what that means here is the expected value can be first of all applied to ax plus the expected value of b. But we know that the expected value of b, which is a constant, is b. And what that means is we have a b here and a b here, so b minus b is 0. Then what you do is you pick up what is left, and what is left is ax minus the a times the expected value of x because the a got pulled out front because constants can get pulled out front of expected value operators. Well, the next thing you can do is you can pull an a out of both of these and square it and it winds up right there. Expected value of a squared times x minus mu squared, but a squared is a constant. So this right here, of course, was uh, simply algebra. And also the expected value of x is the same as mu, so we just rewrote expected value of x as mu. Then since e is again a linear operator, that constant a squared got pulled out. And finally, this last step, if you look at this right here, that is the definition of the sample variance. And so that can be written in this fashion. And that is exactly the result that we are trying to prove, where we assume that all expectations exist because mu and sigma squared exist.